Today we're going to be working on historical thinking skill number one, which is crafting historical arguments from historical evidence. The College Board defines historical argu argumentation in this way. It states that historical thinking involves the ability to define and frame a question about the past and to address that question by constructing an argument. When you guys are writing your essays, you guys are going to have to be able to persuasively convince your teacher and the college board that you not only know the content, but that you also can form an argument about the question being asked. The historical writing is persuasive writing. A lot of times you guys write in a way that is narrative, and that's not what the, coll the college board is looking for. It also states that a plausible and persuasive argument requires a clear, comprehensive, and analytical thesis. So every single time we score an essay, we're going to look to make sure that your thesis meets those three requirements. That it's clear, that it's comprehensive, which means that it answers all parts of the prompt. If there's anything in your thesis statement that has anything missing, then you're not going to get the point and that it is analytical. It shows that you have an argument and it shows that you have some thinking skills. This thesis needs to be supported by relevant historical evidence. One of the things that you guys do in your essays is you list evidence thinking that you're going to get points or you put evidence in that is completely irrelevant to the question. The readers and the teachers know exactly what evidence is supposed to appear in your essays. You can't fake it. And it's not simply evidence that supports a preferred or preconceived position. So in other words, your college board readers and your teachers prefer to have essays that are controversial. We like to be proven wrong. We like to um, have new ideas presented within the framework of your essay. We don't want the, to read the same essay over and over and over again. Additionally, argumentation involves the capacity to describe analyze and evaluate the arguments of others in light of available evidence. For the most part, that part of the historical um, thinking skill will be tested through your DBQ essay. We expect you to be able to analyze other people's arguments in addition to your own argument. Presenting ideas in a multiple amount of ways will help clarify that you have achieved this thinking skill. You also need to have appropriate use of relevant historical evidence. Appropriate use is the most important part of this definition. Historical thinking involves the ability to identify, describe, and evaluate evidence about the past from diverse sources. We will be looking at different sources throughout the course. We're going to be looking at primary written documents. We're going to be looking at art. We're looking at artifacts. We're going to be looking at um, once we get into the modern age film and photographs, anything that is considered to be in the moment will be considered throughout this course for your primary documents. We'll also be reading a ton of secondary documents. In addition to your textbooks, we will be exploring scholarly articles written by people from, who work for National Geographic, the Smithsonian Institute, or just authors who have their PhD in whatever part of history that we're looking at at that time. All of those sources have to be considered when you're trying to learn evidence. You also have to consider the content, authorship, purpose, format, and audience of those sources. And we will look at those in more detail, the, that aspect of um, historical research, in more detail as we go into the DBQ essay. It involves the capacity to extract useful information. Figuring out what is important is very difficult for you guys to do. In the past, your teachers have always said, here's what's important. They give you a study guide, they give you a set of questions, you memorize it, you bubble, you're done. That's not how AP courses work. You have to take a huge amount of available resources, videos, primary documents, secondary documents, your textbooks, what your teachers are saying in class, what other students are saying in class, and you have to form your opinion about a historical event or about a historical question. And you must make supportable inferences and draw appropriate conclusions from historical evidence while also understanding such evidence in its context. 
recognizing its limits and assessing the point of views that it reflects. How to develop your evidence knowledge. The only way to develop evidence knowledge is to memorize. You have to use your Quizlet terms. You have to use the terms that we're giving you. You have to know the names of people. You have to get them in the right empires, in the right time period, in the right region. You have to know some dates in order to contextualize information. You have to know specific events and you have to know specific terms. There's no way you can avoid the memorization aspect of a history course. When I say Joseph Stalin, I need you to be able to say 1953 USSR. When I say Julius Caesar, I need you to know that he, he attempted to create the Roman Republic and was killed for it around 30 BCE. When I say Alexander the Great, I need you to know that he is, he is not Roman. A lot of people associate Alexander the Great with Rome. He's not. He is 300 years before the height of Rome. You have to understand these things, otherwise you're never going to be able to do any of the advanced skills that are necessary for this class. You also have to categorize all of these things. You have to be able to place events, names, people, all that kind of stuff into your different categories. You have to know which terms go in a social paragraph. You have to know which terms are associated with politics. You cannot ignore that. And you have to keep things within the right time periods and within the right regions. When you're trying to form an argument, you have to remember that this is persuasive writing. You're not telling a story. What we're doing in class and what we're studying is telling the story. Yes, we're learning the information. We're figuring out who did what and when. That's the basics of a narrative. However, we are going to be asking you to apply that narrative into some type of argument, into something that says, no, I think the fall of Rome had to do with water supplies, not the nomads from the north, or that you have to analyze the impact Christianity did have on the fall of Rome. And the person next to you should have a completely different argument and a completely different view on that topic. You have to prove your topic sentences by using the evidence you have learned. And that goes back to the previous slide. That completes this lecture. If you would like, you can go on to historical thinking skill two, um, or you can stop for the night.